All right, man, what's poppin'? Uh, you already know, Mr. J Hill, I'm in a building. Uh, another edition of a conversation series where I just sit down and talk to dope creatives, um, you know, like-minded people, like-minded individuals, artists, entrepreneurs, anybody that got a conversation. Um, right now, we speaking to Chink, OTR, what's good? How you feeling? I'm good, how you feeling? I'm all right, man. How was the ride? I know you had a little drive down there. you know, 40 minute ride, it was cool though. It was cool, <laughs> 40 minutes, I know. But that's like, honestly, from that's like downtown to Towson. It ain't that bad for real, man. It's all right. But how you feeling, man? Um, you artist. Um, what type of music would you say you make? Um, I mean, I'm very versatile, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to put myself in a box. Right. Uh, Inkwell had actually sent me the uh, the video of Anxiety. Right. Um, I thought that was dope. Um, Damn. that's your first project, like your first single, first song, or. No, I'm, I've been dropping music since, what, 2016? Mm -hmm. So that's my most recent drop. Okay. So how's it been since then, man? You dropped music since 2016. You've been doing this for a little, a little while. Now it's 2021. You're like a vet in the game now. Like, how, how has it been? How the industry been treating you? Something like that. I mean, it's been kind of tough. At first, it was just me and one teammate. Now I got two teammates mm -hmm. making the trio. So things have been moving a little bit better. I'm learning more about, you know, being in the industry. Mm. It's way deeper than music. So. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Like how you say you had first one person on your team and now it's you. Um, mm. And it's a little bit easier now that you have an additional person on your team, right? Like how, what, what are some of the major differences that you've seen just by having that one person on your team and having two? And do you look forward to having more people on your team? How you how you looking to do that? Um, going from one person to two people, um, my man, my new manager Inkwell, he um mm -hmm. he owns a studio. So me being able to be in that atmosphere, meeting different producers, I worked with a producer one on one for the first time when I came to his studio. So it was dope. Damn, that's fire. So how was you making your music before before you met him? I was just meeting producers, going to different studios. Okay, so you still was sound. you still was in the uh, the studio atmosphere though. Mm -hmm. So like you wasn't like making the music at home because I know a lot of people we see nowadays they get their own equipment and now you're making your music in a in a home setting. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I was curious to know what, what at, at your beginning stage of your career, were you ever making music like that or was always in the studio? Um, I started off going to a studio, mm -hmm. then I eventually started making music in the basement, mm -hmm. getting a producer to come to me, and then I found a studio. What's the major My difference between the two when you're doing it and the experience and the process, honestly? Um, recording in your house is comfortable. Mm. It's comfortable, but everybody got to be quiet. Like, it's, it's strict. Um, right. The studio... The atmosphere feels better. It's different, right? It's different. Like you kind of catch vibes. It's dope. You said something about that um, really caught my, my attention. You said, like, just comfortability, right? Just being comfortable. Do you feel like in your early stages of uh, making music in your career, did you get too comfortable with being comfortable? Like, did it kind of mess up your creativity when you was making music at that time? Um, No. Nah. See, I'm an introvert. Mm. So when I first started making music, nobody knew. Okay. Uh, people started listening to me because I had a video on my phone. My mother started showing it to everybody, and that's when I actually um, got comfortable. And then Korea, my manager, she came and she was like, "We need to get you in the studio." That's fire. So that's it was fire. Dope. So like you, you're an introvert and you, you in the industry, and you, you also touched on some things about like it's way deeper than music. Like, what are some of the things that's that you running into now, being in the industry and understanding how to move in the industry, how people in the industry move, like what are some of the things that you might be uncomfortable with? What are some of the things that you like per se, or just what's your experience now? Um, me being an introvert when I'm not doing anything music related mm. on myself, but when I step into chink, I'm chink. So now I'm learning marketing skills, mm. stuff like that, that I didn't know. I'm, um, I directed the last video I shot too. It was fire. I liked so, it, like honestly though. When I seen it, I think I, I think I even text him back. Usually, when somebody send me music, 
I um I'll check it out, but I probably won't even like really care too much about it. Yeah. But I think I watched it and I was like, oh no, nah, I like this. Like so, it definitely was fire. So like you, you came up with that whole entire thing by yourself. Damn, how was that? It was. I mean, it kind of just came naturally. Like every day, I just would be adding something. Like, ooh, I think I should do this in there. So I came up, put the whole storyline together. And when we met with the directors of the video and everything, they just slid, slid in the transitions and everything. It was. It was so cool. you, you say you write it down. Like I'm, I'm very like I like to see things. So you can't just skip over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was your mind? What was your process? What, what was your thought process when you was putting the, the treatment together by yourself? Like, what were you thinking about? that to made you even like write it up or how you write, write, wrote it up? Um, I know when I'm watching the music video, I like to see a storyline. Mm. So that was the first video that I actually wrote a storyline to. So I had to put myself, pretend I was already, you feel me, deep in the industry. Now I got to make this feel like the music makes me feel. So mm. I just was coming off. Whatever the music made me feel, that's what I think should be in the video. But you named it anxiety, right? And I wanted to talk about that. Like, what? How does it make you feel? Like, how does the industry make you feel? How does where you at make you feel right now? Um, it's tough because I'm. I feel like I'm at that stage where I'm coming from. You feel me? I'm an underground artist. Now I'm stepping into the industry. I'm getting more people. Like anxiety has been. It's been a ride. Mm. It showed me that I'm starting to actually build a real fan base. So I mean. T- but even before like dropping it, right? I'm talking about, like just the word anxiety. Like, do you feel like being in the industry and being in some of these spaces and around these people that's in the industry give you exa- anxiety in real life? Yes, definitely. Like, how how, how does that feel? Because I, I don't think I, I think I've I feel like we don't have these conversations a lot, right? And I feel like some people don't even know what that looked like even if it happened. So the fact that you can acknowledge it and bring it to life to a song for for it to be relatable to somebody, like, how does it feel for you to be? Anxiety, have anxiety in these rooms. Um, let me see. I believe anxiety to me feels like you know you in a room, you kind of just space out. So mm. if there's a lot of people, I have social anxiety. There's a lot of people. Sometimes I just need to zone out because it's like I just it's just a lot going on. Like my brain is just overthinking. Mm. So it's kind of tough, but it's like I I tell myself I'm chink. I'm chink now. I'm not I'm not Alexis. So when I step into chink. All of that goes away now. I'm um, a personality. That process, though, like, cause you know, like, I think it's dope that you can, that you're able to control your anxiety, right? But I think it's more than just being chink, right? It's more than just understanding where you at. And I'm trying to really dig deep and understand, like, how do you control it in that moment? It's, like, of course, you say I'm chink, right? But what are some things that do you do, do any things intentional or intentionally to to get your mind off of being? in this moment, right? Having anxiety, like what are, what are you thinking about in that exact moment? What are you doing intentionally to be like, you know what, I can't focus on my anxiety right now, I gotta focus on where I'm at. Um, I'm a creative, so I use my music like mm. as a mask. I put the mask on and now I'm presenting my music. That's something that I think people might can relate to if I put it out, so that's what I use to try to get past my anxiety. Damn, it's crazy because, you know, every time, um, I've had these conversations before, but now that I'm thinking about it, just putting it in, like, specific to anxiety, right? It made me think about, you know, um, you see these things, it's the saying, uh, check on your strong friend, mm-hmm. right? Do you ever feel like it's a moment where, like, you will, you would like people to check on you or, like, to come to see, come see what's going on with you instead of, like, you having to put the music out? Because I feel like the music can sometimes be entertaining for other people. It's like, you're, you're, you're giving us a service, right? Do you ever feel like you wish somebody would come and give you a service and come help you out? Um, yeah, I do. But I use, if I feel like I don't have that outlet, like I, I don't expect anybody to come check on me. So mm. I use the music. That's just my way of coping with my issues, writing it down. So it don't make you feel away at all? Like it not, that's dope, because it's crazy. Like even just the word expectation, like I feel like so many of us have these expectations and we get upset because when somebody don't meet our expectations, now we're frustrated. But the fact that you was able to even like, you know, surpass all this is dope. Like just as a far beyond being an artist, right? It just make yeah. you dope as a person. And I think that's fire. So I looked on um, Apple Music, right? And I only saw Anxiety. Did I not look deep enough or? Because I think I just searched your name. Um, so I have two joints besides anxiety on there. I have the mask up okay. commercial uh-huh. audio on there and I have a song called Remember Them Days. Okay. So you tell me, this is what, five years now, right? You've been making music. F- five years and there's only three songs on Apple Music. Is it a reason why? 
I dropped mixtapes. I dropped two okay. mixtapes, but I haven't been posting my music on um, streaming platforms like Apple and all of that. Why? Until because recently. of the mixtapes or yeah, mixtape, was it management or putting them on Spinrilla stuff like that, SoundCloud okay. platforms. How has that been like? Putting it because I know the mix the mixtape game used to be lit like back in the day, like even like with Lil Wayne, DJ Clue, even before Wayne, you know what I'm saying? Funk Master Flex. So the fact that you was dropping these mixtapes, how was how was the approach or not even approach? How was the reception from the audience? Like how were they liking it? Um, see when I was dropping music, I was in high school, so I had the kids in high school. Okay. I had a different audience. Okay. But now since I graduated, I'm focusing more on promo. So the way I was promoting then is different way from different. how I'm trying to promote now. Okay. So it's just no. Nah, it makes different. sense. It makes sense, and I feel like a lot of times people be, it's it's crazy that you said that because like I feel like even today artists is chasing the the uh, the the children demographic, like the high school demographic, because like they're the ones that's listening to the music. But the fact that's yeah. like you kind of changing it up, but it's kind of similar, right? Because like even we look at artists like the baby, right? Like that's like videos is the wave right now, and I feel like you, you 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 catching that wave, right? Like that's dope. Um, let's talk about uh, OTR. Me personally, can I be honest? All right, OTR on the rise, right? I think it's dope. However, I feel like you putting yourself in a box. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause you chink. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You lit. Like on the rise is giving me like, I don't know, like I'm coming up. Right? Like you been you you have been doing this for five years, like you lit, right? And I just I definitely if I could I don't wanna say advice, it's just my opinion. Like I I, I ain't who am I to give you my advice? But I feel like, you know, I love the fact that you chink and like your energy just hearing you talk. I feel like I fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know, when I seen the OTR, I was, like, I was just curious. So when you told me you're on a rise, I'm like, you ain't on a rise. Like you lit. You know, that's the first thing I thought. I mean, yeah. I don't know, what was the per like what did you think about when you did it? When you when you put that when OTR? I, when I first started rapping, I just was chink. Mm. So then I added the on a rise, because you feel me, uh influences like Scooter, he had up next. So yeah. I, I felt like I had to put a campaign something okay. that you feel me? I could grow from so chink on the rise because I'm gonna continue rising no matter. Mm, no matter fire, where no matter I'm where I'm at. I'm it's gonna like keep growing. I like that, and it's crazy because like it's so crazy how you could change somebody's perspective by just like telling them your story, right? And shit, how your perspective can change by fucking listening, right? Because yeah. a lot of people judge you and don't fucking listen. I fuck with that because um, it gives it, uh, when you say that the first thing I think about. I'm a I'm a nigga, a, a dude of analogies, right? So like when you first said that, I'm like, damn. The first thing I thought about is my glass is never half, um, it's never full, right? It's always half full, right? Because I'm always looking to get poured into, so I can yeah. always learn. So no matter where you at in your career, you're always rising, right? I fuck with that. So now, now that you said, I like that. I don't think you should ever take this shit up, right? Like yeah. I think <laughs> it should be on the rise, even if you at ten hundred million pe views and followers, because that's dope. It shows that you always learning and you always open to it. I fuck with it. I love it. Uh, what are some things that you're working on right now that we can look forward to? Um, I'm working on just keeping dope content out. I mm -hmm. want to keep I that momentum see. going. <laughs> I want all my videos to be crazy. Yeah. I definitely want to keep that. Um, you know, like other creatives like me to come follow me because of not just the music, but because of the visuals. Mm -hmm. I want people to, you feel me, rock with me for the music and the visuals. Yo, you know it's gonna be fire, and I'm gonna just speak this into existence, right? So I was looking at um. I'm talking to you because like you remind me, like hearing me, like you remind me of the baby, and not as far as like the music and things like that, but just your your mindset and your creative vision behind it, right? And I remember he was saying like how he linked up with uh real goats yeah. or whatever. He was like, man, that was like one of the best connections that he made because they they brought something to the table and then he brought his creative ideas to the table and then they make like just crazy magic. Videos. So it's crazy if you could get the next person on your team to be like a creative director or like a uh, I don't know, like a video director. And then y'all really can lock in. That could yeah. be your fourth person or your third person. My bad, because you said you had two. That could be your third. Ooh, that's gonna be crazy. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. What are some things? What are some music you making now? Um, I'm making everything. I'm really trying to find my pocket. Like I feel mm. like every artist has a pocket. I'm very versatile, so I'll try to rap on anything. But I'm trying to really find that wave, like lock in with a producer mm. and really find that sound. Well, no, I think you with the right person, definitely. I know the studio, I ain't been there in a minute, but I know the studio or vibe, like just even the aesthetic of it. So like, yeah. shit, I can even see videos coming out the studio just on some, it don't always have to be a music video, it could be like behind the scenes, little, what is it, Thriller they call it? I'm old now, yeah. like, I don't thriller, even know, Thriller? thriller. <laughs> like, I don't even know, Thriller, like the TikTok and shit, like, nah, I, you know, I, um, I'm definitely wishing you the best, and um, if there's anything else you wanted to touch on that I might not, not have got to, you can definitely um, say it or anything. Mm. At the beginning of the pandemic. 
For real? Oh yeah, I do want. I do want to touch. You told me this. No. Bro, what's viral? What 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 count as viral? Cause I ain't see it. Uh, uh, Twitter. Oh, I ain't see it. Oh, y'all don't follow. Okay, how many mil you did? Honestly, I don't even know. I don't know how much I did on Twitter. And it was mask up. Like, yeah. I don't even know what song that is. What song is that? Was it like three mil? Uh, oh, that's lit. I don't even know. On what though? I saw it went, no, viral. All a part it of the went viral on Facebook. I'm this. Then it went to Twitter. Then it went to the shade room. Damn! Off the mask what? up. You got it? Can I see it? Yeah. Oh. Let me yeah, see. So I gotta find a post. So what happened was the same uh, distribution company that puts out the tape nine. Mm. They distributed the song, so there's about to be this big campaign behind it, and then this is actually uh, the uh, shade room post right there. Oh, nah, this is fire. <laughs> but it wasn't about the music. They was just clowning, <laughs> trying to clown me. Like, it, was, it, it wasn't a good. I mean, it was good. Like, I mean, none Man, of that that shit me. good. You tripping. Like, all that shit good. Fuck, they don't know you. The fuck they but that's say, the thing. Like, that's the thing. I didn't really have that much music out. Okay. You feel me? For them people to right. go. So it's like, all right. She rapping, but it's corny. Bro, that's crazy, though. So, like, it's crazy that you say that, right? Because um, they say success is when, like, I opportunity meets preparation right so it's like do you feel like right now where you at right now if that if that situation would have happened again you'll be ready yeah definitely. because i think that was a great learning experience right because like if you had like your body of work that you got right now if you had that then then like you would have captivated a whole different type of audience because you was ready for the moment right definitely but uh what made you even what was that what made you drop mask up mask up um actually i was at the studio with ink and one of his clients came through and mm -hmm. they was talking about a commercial and I just so happened to be in there. So they was like, oh, snap, like, you feel me, you young, you would, that would be dope for you to do it. So Ink wrote the song and I came back the next day and recorded it. Mm -hmm. And we ended up shooting a video for it. It uh, made it to Bounce TV and all of that. So so it went viral because, cause, just cause I, didn't, I don't think I caught it. So you probably got to paint this picture for me all over because you got to help me out. Like, so you, you dropped it, Yeah. right? And when did you first notice it going viral? Like, when did you first see the numbers going crazy? All right, so what happened was um, I performed for the mayor. I okay. performed the song. First of all, so that's fire in itself. I had never been to a press conference or anything, so I didn't know what to expect. But wait, but hold up. Though, wait, wait, before you go in. Because you, like, don't skip past it. Like, I need the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, that's the start. But no, that's not the start. You say, but I performed for the mayor. It's mad niggas that would love to perform for the mayor. How did you even get there? Like, how did the mayor even hit you? Like, yo, come perform for Honestly, me. Like, that ain't happening every day. I don't even know. Like, um, I get, how how did that even happen? Like, I mean, I just, I, I, I put some players in my Oh, so that was your, your, your number two partner that you put on your <laughs> team. So that's important to <laughs> having somebody on your team. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so yeah. That's Ink put some plays in, bet, so like, she wants you to perform for her. So that's a major play. That's a major play to have on your team to hit the mayor, because like, I'm pretty sure mad people would want to perform in front of the mayor. All right, bet. Yeah, so I performed, but uh, it was, uh, um, what's it Interpreter. called? Interpreter behind me. Hey, yo. And that's, that was the viral part. So my performance was pretty chill, because I wasn't performing for a crowd. I was performing for a lot of cameras. Okay. And you feel me? That was a different vibe. That was something yeah, I never done. So they live streamed it on Facebook, but it went viral on Twitter <laughs> because of the interpreter. So they just like Baltimore so ratchet. Like, you feel me? They they was coming for me saying the interpreter had more energy and stuff. And then they was calling me, oh, she looked like she got the, uh, I got a pencil girl. They were saying I look like Dietra Nada. They were saying all this stuff. But then it went to the shade room. Then they was really coming for me. But it was cool though, cause I'm like, man, they, little do they know that I really got a vault for right. some hits. Wait, so did did they put your your Instagram name on the video or anything? Did no. they even know who you were? No, they ain't know. So you didn't even get a lot of followers from this one. No, I mean people came yes. to my page, like people found me. Okay. But once again, the music wasn't being presented. Yeah, it was just. So it was just like, yeah. She's how did how did that make you? But it's crazy because like. And that, that brings it full circle, right? Like, just talking about anxiety. Like, because you said you want to bring light to that, right? Yeah. And that moment. Because it's even with me being saying OTR, right? It's mm -hmm. like people are so quick to judge and not, like, they don't really want to take the time to really get to know the person, right? Right. 
How did that make you feel in that moment? It's like, yo, niggas got so much to say and they don't even know. Like, this is a great opportunity. Shit, I'm an introvert. Like, this is probably one of my first times doing all this. But the first, only thing they want to do is put, shine a light on the negative part about it or right. the interpreter or make fun of it. Like, how did that make you feel? Honestly, it really didn't bother me. Like, it didn't. So you're a different breed. Like, I need so to hang around like, you So it was like, I kind of found it funny. Like, all right, I, I laughed at some of the stuff because it was funny. Okay. But me knowing what I got, you feel me? Knowing that I got actual hits, it's mm. like, okay, they just going to have to wait. Damn. They just going to have to wait. To First see. of all, I just want to salute you because, like, are you just saying it ain't bother you or really ain't bother you? Honestly, no, really, be but, honest. But, all right, so this is what happened. I got a phone call. My, one of my cousins called me before, ain't called me. He like, oh, snap, it went viral. He was like, I'm letting you know. He was like, they clowning you. He was like, man, but don't let none of that get to you. So I'm like, all right, now I go look on Twitter. I'm like, all right, this is cool for real. Next thing I know, my mother like, oh, my gosh, you want to shave her? <laughs> and everybody in the house just get on that phone. I'm just like, all right, I mean, I'm on the shave room. That's cool. Man, people pay thousands of dollars to get on the shave room. Like, you I mean, like. It I'm was, tell it you was right dope. Now. It was I'm dope to say. say that I was able to do that, but um, the music wasn't there. Right. Yeah. I, like, I mean, I got I got the chance to be on a commercial. I got the chance to go viral. Um, I mean, I think it was just preparing me for the future. Mm. Honestly, you know, they say like the first million is the hardest to get for real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like. Nah, for real. So I, I know it's gonna happen again. You know what I'm saying? But now, next time it happens, you gonna be prepared. Make sure you got your tag on the video. So if that. Even if it's negative, they at least gonna know where you at and they can follow you and they can hear the fire that you got. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You were talking about anxiety, uh, and you said you definitely wanna put some attention on anxiety and just because a lot of people don't know how it feels if it, even if it hit them. Like yeah. why is that so important to you? Cause me personally, I deal with anxiety and depression mm. day to day. So I know it's hard for me to deal with sometimes. I know there's other people out there that that struggle with anxiety and depression. I know I'm not the only one. So I just wanted to bring awareness to let, you know, people know that they're not alone. And like I said, I had different people around me dealing with different depressions, anxiety and everything. And I didn't really understand their space, like the space that they was in. And I was like upset at them because mm. you're doing this. And we just witnessed this. So right. it was like frustrating. So I was like, all right, I can't just keep looking at it from this point of view. I got to think about how they feel. So I wrote a song from that perspective. No, I love it. I love it. Um, I Like I said, man, I think you definitely got a dope perspective on life in general, right? I feel like a lot of that situation in particular would have yeah. hurt a lot of people. Like, I even witnessed something similar where I had somebody on my team, you know what I'm saying, I had to deal with something like that, and um, I just saw how they took it. And But it's, it's rightfully so, because, like, no, a lot of people not going through that, you know what I'm saying, having thousands of people make fun of them and things like that. But the fact that you was able to overcome that is pretty dope, and I feel like your future is definitely going to be bright. You know what I'm saying? I definitely feel like your future is bright. And um, I appreciate the sit down. If you want, just let people know where to follow you at and everything like that and how they can get anxiety one more time. You can get anxiety on all streaming platforms. The video is up on YouTube. You can follow me at C-H-I-N-K underscore O-T-R on all platforms. Alrighty, man. I appreciate the sit down. Another conversation with Mr. J Hill. Chink O-T-R. It's a wrap. We out.